Righteous Missionary Baptist Church, and we invite you to subscribe and like uh, our YouTube channel. It's Briar Chase Church, and you'll find all of our sermons, our Bible studies, and events. It's really cute videos and things on there too, so come on out, uh, enjoy the fun, enjoy the worship, and the study in the Word of God. month we've been working with um, the NAACP. Keep, keep playing just for a little bit until everybody disperses. We've been working with the NAACP and um, we've been trying to work on a new literacy program for the community. Um, the NAACP said, well, Pastor Graham, we can help you. We'll We'll sponsor food if we need it. We'll find teachers if we need it. They said, when you last did a literacy program, where'd you get your teachers from? I said, well, we have a good retired uh, group of teachers here at Briar Chase, but um, we've got about five of the young teachers that were over at the um, Briar Gate Elementary School. They had already said they'd be willing to help out, and they did. Where I get elementary school is now getting shifted. And anybody knows about the community, the kids have been displaced and Fort Ben ISD has promised that they will build uh, another facility on that spot. But Fort Ben ISD has lied to me before. And um, I don't put any hope in an independent school district. What I do put my hope in is in Jesus Christ. So we said, okay, let's, Let's gather some teachers and we, we drew up a plan that could, we could probably serve 25 students for an academic program. We said, okay, let's see if we can get them to sign up. And they, they, they ran a marvelous sign up campaign and program. Uh, they, we only had seven parents to come to sign up their students, only seven. We had room enough for 25. And I said, well, let's, let's just keep going forward. Let's keep it, seven as a start. We gotta start somewhere. Um, their first uh, session was to be this Saturday, and when, when they showed up at the teachers here at 8.30, uh, students supposed to be here at 9, we only had one child show. Now, we can look at this and say it's a failure, or we could simply say, well, we've come to a bridge or a gap or a hindrance, but we got to press forward. If they won't come to us, we got to figure out a way to go to them. So I'm asking you teachers who went out with me years ago when we went over to Briar, Briargate School and we read to those children, I'm asking for you to get prayed up again. We're going to ask for a core of you to go back out. We're gonna go find a new school and a new place where we can invest some resources and love so that when, when we did it here at Briargate, 100%, not 99, 100% of every student that we touched, their literacy, their reading and comprehension levels grew that year. We only spent 15 minutes. We spent seven minutes reading to them and seven minutes them reading to us. Some of us took on three and four students. Most of us took on one, but it made an impact in our community. We need to make that impact again. I'm hoping and praying, and I'm asking for you to hope and pray with me that we can get some of these young parents on board. But if not, that can't stop us. Reading is fundamental. It's essential. I know we, we, we work on the STEM, uh, uh, um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but reading is fundamental. When I was in fourth grade, my teacher, Miss Pope, told my father, your son will never learn to read. 
He's either dyslexic or something is wrong with him. He will never learn to read. You're going to have to label him educably, mentally handicapped and put him in a different setting. That's what this woman told my father. My father said, my son will not have a label and we're going to pray and figure out a way to get him to learn to read. And uh, I don't know how much he paid my uh, big sister, Letitia, but after she finished all of her homework, it was her job to begin to teach me to read. And I don't know when it happened, but sooner or later, I began to catch on to words and to comprehend. I'm just telling somebody this today because without the ability to read, I can't give you what God has blessed me with in this. So because somebody believed in me, somebody had hope in a God that is greater than an academic system. Someone had some authority and some resources to uh, uh, pay my sister to finish her homework early so that she can work with her little brother. Reading is fundamental. 80% of every book that I have in my library, 80% I've got on my computer. But why do I buy the book in the library anyway? Because I'm so thankful when I walk in that office. That God allowed me to read. I, I pray that someone's heart is touched. That you will join our literacy efforts. That we will help someone in this community to become a lover of reading. Stand with me. As I read to you from the word of God. Thank you. If you have your Bibles, and I, I sure hope you do. I've been here 15 years, and I'm really hoping that y'all got your Bibles by now. And if not, ask any usher. They will bring you to me, and we will find you a Bible. I own at least 50 Bibles. I can surely give you one. In the Gospel of Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, I'll begin our reading today in the seventh chapter, the seventh chapter of St. Luke. I'll start our reading round about verse 36. And I'll stop at verse 40. In the notes that I passed out or sent out to the leadership team, uh, uh, I ask of you to read all the way from verse 36 down to the end of chapter 7, down to 50. I need that for your context when you study this passage. Before you're hearing today, I'll read these selective passages for you. I'll be reading from the New King James Version of His Holy Scriptures, Luke chapter 7, beginning at verse 36. And one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. They're talking about Jesus. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, 
If he were a prophet, he would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him. For she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, now he was talking to himself. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, Simon's the Pharisee. He said, I have something to say to you. Simon, his old cocky, arrogant self. He said, teacher, say it. Rabbi, say on. As you take your seats, I just want to talk to you just for a little while about the Savior and a sinful servant. The Savior and a sinful servant. There, there are uh, 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 two servants in this text. There, there is the Pharisee who is a servant. He's serving Jesus at the table. He has brought him into his home. Then there's a servant, this uh, woman who we know to be a prostitute. And she is serving Jesus at his feet, anointing his feet with oil. There, there are two sinners uh, uh, in the company of this text. There's the Pharisee who we find out exactly his motives as we continue in the text. Uh, uh, we find out that he's arrogant and proud. He thinks more highly of himself than he ought. And then there is this woman who we know to be a sinner and well-known in the community. This text is often confused with the text at Bethany. There in Bethany, at the end of Jesus' ministry, uh, his head is anointed, his feet is anointed, but it is anointed for his burial. It is anointed for the crucifixion. It is anointed for that time. This is not then. This now, they're, they're, they're in Galilee. Uh, uh, and this is at the beginning of his ministry. This is uh, this is only noted in the gospel of Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. It's not found anywhere else. But at this occasion, he is anointed and Jesus wants to take what is happening and make a parable and explain to Simon the Pharisee that something he's thinking is wrong. Uh, 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 he's he's trying to say that this woman, because of her reputation, is so much worse than him. And Jesus is bringing it all together. That, that, that though her sin is great, uh, you, you also have sinned. And for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it's important as we approach this text, we, we do not excuse the sin of the woman, nor do we excuse the sin of the Pharisee. We simply take note that some sin more and some sin less, but yet all have sinned. And none of us, not a single one of us has the power to save ourselves. We all need Jesus. We, we approach this text and it, it is right after Jesus. Uh, he calls forth all of his disciples and there were more than 12. He calls forth all of his disciples and he chooses out of all the disciples, 12 whom he calls apostles, including Judas, the, the betrayer. Uh, he, 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 he brings them and begins this, his earthly ministry of healing and teaching. And uh, 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 the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day, if you read throughout the text, you'll see the religious leaders of the day were, were, were talking about that Jesus is hanging with the wine bibbers. Jesus hanging with the tax collectors. And he, he said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Jesus charges uh, 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 the Pharisees, the lawyers. And he says, hey. Well, when, when John the Baptist called you to be baptized for the sake of repentance, you rejected him. He neither said and ate, nor, nor did he take a part in any wine. And yet you called him a did. Let me find that scripture for you. He says, for John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he is a demon. The son of man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look, a glutton, a wine bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. He said, you, anyway, I present to you a message of repentance. You reject it because your heart's not right. Pharisee, the Pharisee. I'm, I'm going to talk about three things in this text. I, I want to talk about the Pharisee. I'm going to talk about the parable that Jesus brings forth. And then I'm going to talk about the pardon. 
I'm going to talk about the Pharisee because it's, need, it's needed for us to understand that, that, that the, the, the way we, we have whole Pharisees in low esteem today. But back in that day, Pharisees were held in very high esteem. The very uh, uh, name Pharisee means the separated one. These were men who spent their entire lives uh, studying the scripture, uh, uh, practicing uh, 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 the word of God. They believed wholeheartedly that our Old Testament, their Torah, was the word of God. They practiced in tithing. They practiced uh, in giving of their substance. They practiced in fasting. Uh, but the Bible shows us example after example after example. When they were ready to tithe, they found uh, the, 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 the flash that was large large enough so that when they drop their coins in, their coins would go doing, doing, because they wanted everybody to hear how much they were putting in. Uh, the Bible teaches us that, that when they fasted, they would rip their garments and ash their faces so that everybody would see that they were fasting. These men were show-offs. They were show-offs, and they thought themselves more higher than anybody else. Uh, they, they even said, Jesus makes an example. He said, he said, they even said in their prayers, I thank God that we are not like these other people. Don't be too hard on the Pharisee, though. Because there's some modern-day Pharisee going on. But we begin to look at the sin that we're involved in and we go, oh, no, uh, that over there is a sinner, sinner, sinner. Not like us. I'm glad I'm not like them. Oh, you know from the text that no one sitting around the Pharisees table uh, spoke up. And, and said, oh, this woman is a sinner because they might have to explain how they knew what type of sinner she was. Mm -mm -mm. They, no, no, no. They whispering to themselves. <laughs> if Jesus was a prophet, he would know what type of woman he's with. Mm. Jesus, knowing the heart of every man, speaks without even being questioned. And says, Simon, I, I got something to tell you. Because this this woman, when uh, she came in, she brought a, the very best that she had. Y'all, this was not a happenstance visit from this sister. She prepared herself when she heard where Jesus was. She, she wasn't just walking around in the city carrying expensive ointment. No, she wasn't. No, 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 no. She went to her abode, found the most expensive thing that she could afford. And she brought that to Jesus and poured it on his feet. Bible doesn't say that she ever poured it on his head. No, she must have felt too ashamed to touch the head of her rabbi. She must have felt too ashamed to touch the head of her Lord. So she, she cries tears. To wash his feet. She takes her hair to wipe his feet. She takes her lips to kiss his feet. She anoints his feet with her expensive oil. Y'all know where she got that money from to buy that oil? She didn't have a husband. She had one profession that we know of. I can remember one time in my life when my mother, who was also my pastor, chastised me in the ministry. Um, oh, she beat my butt because as a mom to a son, I got I got whipped pretty good. Uh, not, not as bad as my little brother, but he, you know, here, here. Uh, uh, one time we were having the, my mama's church was in the hood it was if you know anything about south side of chicago we were on the corner of 87 and vincennes y'all 87 vincennes was where el rookins would would have the 87th street half and the disciple street gang would have uh uh the the uh 86th street side and um 
uh, these were big, big, big gangs in uh, Chicago. And, um, in the houses around the church, uh, uh, sometimes there, there would be some, uh, what we would suppose was illicit things going on. And, uh, uh, we didn't know if there was drug dealing or drug selling. or We didn't know, but we was praying and praying hard. And I was young and I was young in ministry and my one of the one of the street thugs came in to church. He was a thug. He was a thug and we knew him to be uh, slinging drugs on corners. He came into church and we didn't know what was uh, his deal, but he he pulled out a wad full of money. And he just wanted to put it in the offering. And I looked to my mama and I said, are you going to take that money? And she said, is your money any cleaner? To not only hear that from your mama, but to hear that from your pastor was, whew, because, because I knew, I felt like the men with the rock ready to throw down on the woman who had been caught in adultery. And Jesus says, uh, 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 if there's any one among you who have never sinned, you, you throw the, the first stone. And uh, the Bible says from the oldest to the youngest, they, they dropped those stones and walked away because they realized, you know, who are we to judge what gifts men bring before their God? I just want to yeah, put that out there because sometimes we get a little hainty in our pharisaical ways. We start acting like we, we, because we've been in church some 40 years, that, that somehow we better than somebody else. Yeah, yeah, they may have done more sin, but what? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. My mom, for as long as she pastored for 40 years, she never hired security for that church. Revival Center Church of God in Christ never, to my knowledge, hired security. Y'all know who stood around that church? Gang bangers and thugs. And they would say, Pastor, we got you. We got you. We got you. And she walk in and some of the younger ones, she kiss on the forehead and the older ones, she just wait. One day she left her car running on 87th Street. She was so much in a hurry to get into the service. Left it running. When she got back out after church, that car was still sitting there and still running. And the little wino that sits across the street, he said, Pastor Mildred, he said, I wasn't coming into your church like this. He said, but I tell you, wasn't nobody getting in that car. Sometimes, saints, we forget whom we're here to serve. Sometimes, saints, that, uh, we got some uh, pretty Gucci shoes and some uh, uh, beautiful, wonderful suits and some nice dresses and hats. And sometimes we forget that, that we are to be a, 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 a light for this world. A songwriter once wrote many years ago. Uh, she wrote, you don't know the cost of that oil. They used to ask when we were, me and Letitia grew up Church of God in Christ. So there was a lot of people flipping over pews and dancing all around and stuff. And uh, the, the question would arise, does it take all that? If you knew what this all cost me, oh yeah, it'd take all that. If you knew what God has saved me from, yeah, you know it'd take all that. If you know how God lifted me up, well, well, why do I preach this way? Why do I shout like this? Because yes, it takes all that. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I say hallelujah because it's the highest level of praise I know how to give. Yes, it takes all that. So, Jesus says, Simon, I got something to tell you. That cocky man. Say on, Rabbi. Talk. And uh, Jesus says there were two who owed money to a certain money lender. That's in the text. Read the text. He said there were two that owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii, and the other owed him 50. Denarii is worth about a day's wage. 500 denarii is about two years worth of, worth of wages. 50 denarii is about two months worth of wages. He, he looks over to Simon Pharisee. He tells him, he, he finishes up. He said, neither of them uh, had the money to pay him back. So he forgave both the debts. And he asked the question to the Pharisee. He says, which one loved him more? The Pharisee knew exactly what he was making an example of him. He said, the one who, probably the one who owed the most. He said, you judge rightly. You judge rightly. Because we don't know what she had gone through in order to get at his feet. Uh, and so he said, do you see this woman? He, he breaks from the parable and then explains it right to him. He said, do you see this woman? He said, I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. He said, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. He said, you did not kiss me. But this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head. But this woman, she has poured perfume on my feet. I'm telling you, uh, though this woman had many sins, he said, this is why she loves so much. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Jesus does not overlook the sin. Forgiveness does not mean that you got a free ticket to sin. Grace is not for you to abuse. Uh, 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 what does the Bible say? Oh, Paul says, what shall I say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound? Certainly not. God forbid. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Here's the therefore. Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death. And that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. I've come to share some to somebody. Uh, you can't say that just because Satan is around that Satan made you do it. God says no. He said you have to walk in the newness of life because you have been buried with him and because he got up from the grave, it has freed you from the power of sin, grave, and death. Oh, don't let this world but make you think that you don't have a choice. God has endowed you, empowered you with the Holy Ghost. You can say no to sin. You can say yes to his will. You can give up that arrogance and pride. And you can walk in the newness of life saying, Lord, I'm sorry I felt this way about my fellow brother and my fellow sister. But Lord, I'm coming to you right now. And I don't have no hair left. But I sure enough can find some oil. I sure enough can kiss your feet, my God. Because you're worthy of all the praise. 
that I can muster. One of the thugs, and he was a thug, y'all, he was. By every definition, he beat up folk. Uh, he, he was not a nice guy. He got, we don't know if he was the, the leader or just a bad brother. Just, you know, people were scared of him. He came into the church with this. At that time, I had never seen a gold chain so thick in my life. We were baptizing down in the basement. We, had a, we didn't have a pretty pool like this. We had a mobile pool that you had to push out. <laughs> it was an oversized bathtub, about this big. Walk, stair, go up, get down in it. We're back. He said, we heard you baptizing. I want to know, can I get baptized? My mom said, yeah, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And uh, she said, do you want to take your chain off? He said, no, ma'am. He said, this is the best that I have. And I want to go down with it. Is that? I don't know if he knew how deep he was. That was the best that he had. And he wanted to be buried and lifted back up again with it. Do y'all remember when James, James Williams came to this church? Many, many, many years ago. Uh, James, uh, uh, we, had, we, had, we had made known to him the, the gospel in, in the neighborhood. And he had, he had come up and wanted to get baptized. And he found one of the children's crowns back there from, uh, from the Easter program or something. And uh, we were sitting back there. And he said, can I, I, I wear this crown and I said well it's, it's you know it's a costume he said but I heard somewhere that I shall wear a golden crown I said you know what he don't understand all that's going on but he does understand that he wants to go under so I told the deacon I said don't say nothing dumb we're gonna put him in the water with this crown we're gonna lift him up with this crown do y'all know less than three months later that boy was taken home to glory and he got his crown yeah he was wearing a plate crown here but in glory. And y'all know what? Uh, just like we know, he didn't have to wear that crown. He said it's for Jesus. It's for Jesus. There's one king in glory. <laughs> and though I may be presented with a crown one day, it's not for me. It's a shove at the feet of my God. Let us consider the pardon. My Bible says that he says thy sins are forgiven you. She never once, according to scripture, asked for forgiveness. But Jesus knew something that we didn't know. That's it. He knew on the heart, deep down on the inside, yeah, yeah. that what she needed was forgiveness of sins. Y'all yeah. remember we talked about something like this before? Uh, when they were lowering the paral paralytic man down yeah. into uh, the space, the house where Jesus was. Uh, and, and they said, oh, he needs to be healed. And Jesus said, thy sins are forgiven you. Oh, and the Pharisees going, who, are this? who is this man? Thinking he can forgive sins. Jesus said it would have been it would have just as easy for me to say, thy sins are forgiven, or for me to say, take up your bed, rise, take up your bed and walk. But I said to you, <laughs> thy sin, he said to him, thy sin is forgiven, that you might know that the Son of Man has power. He's got power to forgive sins. Some wonder working power. Oh, he said to this woman, thy sins are forgiven you. He would not let her leave that conversation without realizing that her sins were not washed away because she brought a good gift. Hear me. Because uh, some people think they can pay their way into salvation. Some people think they can give an, an education wing or, or give a van to the church and somehow that just grants them some glory. Oh, no, 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 no. He said, woman, I get you notice. He says, it's not the all uh, that you presented. 
It's not the tears that you shed. It's not the kissing of my feet. No, I deserved all of them, Jesus. Uh, he said, but it's your faith that saved you. Now, now you're ready. Go. Go in peace. Jesus says, some peace I, I leave with you. John 14. Peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. When God, when you have peace with God, he gives you the peace of God. The Bible says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. How do I get this peace? Romans 5 says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I've got one final thought that I want to give you today. If you want to have peace with God so that you may experience the peace of God, you've got to do one thing. You've got to place your trust in Jesus Christ alone. And when you believe uh, that he died on Calvary's cross, he was buried in a borrowed tomb, but he got up with all power in his hands that might take you who were once an enemy of God and now give you peace. Your faith has saved you. Now go in peace. The door of the church is open. Won't you come? Ministers, deacons, won't you? Won't you come today? Won't you come if, you, if you've been far from God? He's calling you near. If you've been outside of the ark of safety, he's calling you in. If you're looking for a church home, we just believe today there's no better place, there's no better home than the place of Briar Chase Missionary Baptist Church right here in Missouri City, Texas. We just believe today if God is placing a call on your life, if God is touching you, that you might come and to help us to lift up this blood-stained banner. God bless your heart, brothers and sisters. God bless your heart. Help us. Won't you come? If you're here today and you're looking for brothers and sisters that will help you in this Christian journey, come. Give your hand to the preacher, but give your heart to God. Won't you come? Won't you come? There's power. There's wonder working power. In that blood of the Lamb. There's power. Power. Wonder working power. In the blood of the Lamb. Help me sing, saints.
Keep singing, sis. Keep, keep it. Power, wonder work and power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb. His power, power, wonder work and power in the fresh, just blood of the Lamb. Amen. So, Secretary, I know you want to finish up with our new couple, but are my brother and sister coming for prayer? Y'all come on for prayer. Y'all, y'all keep talking. They're, they're not disturbing. We're gonna, we're, we can do two. We can do two. Come on up here. Come on up. Right. You want to bring them? Come on. Captain, come on, sweetie. Deacon, surround us too, please. Surround us as we just lift up these families. Yeah. Jordan is still, um, he's doing the salvage work over in, what city is this, Baltimore? He sent me the most horrifying pictures of the wreckage, and you know I can't share them with nobody just yet because there's some legal stuff going on. But I asked him, I said, just share with me what you see and what you do. And uh, he just took videos, and it, it looks like the set out of a horror movie. Um, and he's, he's diving. He dives down um, and, and God protects him while he's underwater. He, he cuts portions of the bridge loose. That means he's working machinery underwater. And then he's a part of the team that's helping it to resurface so they can take it away. And uh, they have to bring it to an exhibition site where they can do, they, they, they literally rebuilt the entire bridge all over again uh, while they do their investigations. It's, um, um, it is an active Cemetery. Okay. So not only do they have to work hard, uh, but they have to do so in such a manner that is uh, respectful to those who passed away. Pray um, that he has safety while underwater and um, that God protects our son until we see him again. Catherine, we we loved you, girl. We watched you grow up. Um, We're going to just pray for y'all whole family. All right. We're going to pray for the whole family. Father, we need you to touch. We need you to move. We need you to do what we cannot do for ourselves. Father, strengthen, strengthen. Father, give not only physical strength, but give mental strength. But Father, above all, give spiritual strength. Father, allow us to, to depend and to rely on your word. And Father, as we pray for those around us, as we pray for brother, sister, mother, father, daughter, granddaughter, as we pray, as we pray for those that uh, uh, we have responsibility over, and as we pray for those who have responsibility over us, Father, we call on you right now to answer prayer. Father, give us insight and give us wisdom. Give us the know-how of what to do and what to say. And Father, even more, give us the insight on what to pray. There are sometimes, Father, we don't know the words. We don't know what to say. We don't know what's appropriate. But you do, Lord. Allow your Holy Spirit to so move in our hearts and minds that we say that which is helpful and edifying. Father, give us a word. Give us a word that will lift our brother and sister. Give us a word that will glorify your name. Give us a word that will establish your word. Father, help us. Help us in this endeavor. And Father, as we go, as we do our best, we may fail at some attempts. But Father, your promise to us that our fall will not be unto death. Father, your promise to us that you have already wiped away that 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 sting. The, 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 the sting. Of, there is no sting of death. There, there is no victory in the grave. Father, we praise your name today. We will praise your name in advance. We will praise your name before we know the outcome. We will praise your name before you give us the answer. Because you're worthy. You're worthy, our God. You are worthy, our God. So, Father, we ask you now to hear not only the words of our mouths, but also the meditations of our hearts. Let them be acceptable in your sight because you are our strength and our redeemer. This is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We say amen. 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 Now, preachers. Y- y'all can go sit, but preachers, y'all stay around here. Stay around here. I'm going to get Sister Secretary. Let me wipe my face. Wait, look at me first. Look at me. I'm okay. I'm okay. I have things hanging off me. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. We have Taisha. Taisha? Riley. Riley. And Anthony's husband, and he's her future husband. His future, yeah, fiance. 
If, 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 his name is husband. His name is husband, and he's a future husband. Is that true? Am I getting it right? Husband, okay, but come on up. Brother Husband, Riley. Sister Riley, and y'all coming to unite. Come on, come on. Alicia, Aisha, and Anthony. Come on, Aisha. Aisha, am I saying that right, Aisha? No, I'm not. Taisha, Taisha. Y'all help me. Where's Sister Grant? Get, get close in there when I mess these names up. Taisha. Anthony, that's easy. That's easy. All right. Taisha and Anthony, we so thank y'all for uh, uh, coming up and taking this bold step together. Uh, we pray that as you two unite as one, that you allow us to even take part in that, um, that experience of joy. Um, uh, we, we offer, as your pastor now, we offer some good pastoral counseling. I've been counseling for over 30 years now, and um, we, we, we really, really believe that um, um, the more you know going in, uh, the, uh, the, the more equipped you are to handle problems when they arise. They will arise. Taish, I'm telling you, as, as, a, as a husband of 34 years, Oh, yes, 30, 30, 30, 30 more years. <laughs> As a husband of three decades, uh, <laughs> that sometimes you're going to mess this thing up. <laughs> but uh, God makes it so that uh, he shows us over and over again how two can become one. I'm thankful that you chose uh, us to be a part of your family as you continue on this journey. As whatever life may bring you to, we hope now to be enjoying with you together. As we grow, as we uh, fight for community, as we fight for love, we have to fight for love. It just doesn't just happen. You have to fight for it. Uh, and as we fight for fellowship, as we fight for growth, we want to grow in godliness and grow in spirituality and grow in our duty toward him. So we're asking uh, and we're thankful that you've taken this uh, step with us. Um, I don't know either of you. And um, this, this is a little odd because typically... When uh, folk join, I've, I've had some encounters and, and measures. So you're going to have to uh, allow me to get to know you. I promise I'm, I'm, I'm a half decent guy. And um, if, if y'all let me uh, know you, uh, um, uh, you'll find that we, we, us three, can make good relationship together. All right. So we now, uh, I want to give you, uh, let me give you, uh, you first uh, the right hand of welcome. I welcome you into this fellowship. I invite you to take part in our new membership class. It's about four classes every um, every Sunday morning in Sunday school. And then I'll bring you back up and get, once you finish those four classes, give you the right hand of fellowship and I'll get you all rights and privileges. But right now, I welcome you. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you full, uh, work out your full salvation in this place with this family. I welcome you. Amen. Taisha and Anthony. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Amen. This privilege is ours to extend. It is yours to accept. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yours to accept or reject. God bless you all. Thank you, deacons. Thank you, preachers. Let's now, let's prepare our hearts for an offering. And then we're going to prepare for the... Uh, the communion services. Where, where am I trying to say? The uh, reading of the church covenant. But let's prepare your hearts and minds. Ushers, we are going to walk today. I'm looking for my nod from Sister Mosey. We doing this? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, on first Sundays, or typically when we have a large, uh, larger than normal uh, assembly, they will do the walk. So we're going to turn now the hands over to our usher staff.
Is this mine or yours? I didn't, I didn't do it. I Before we pray, remember that uh, we serve electronic giving. For those of you who would like to give through Zelle, you can give at uh, finance at briarchasechurch.org. It's the easiest way. Um, pretty much most people are doing online giving or electronic giving now. Uh, we also have a program called uh, Givelify. Wonderful, wonderful application. There's a tiny fee uh, attached to it. So anytime you use that app, know that there's a little fee that's attached on there. Um, whatever you give. We like the app because it gives you an instant accounting of everything that you do. But if you're a good accountant, um, like we should all strive to be, um, you can definitely use Zelle. Um, and uh, we have in our foyer um, a secure and sterilized uh, offering box where you can give as you uh, enter the church or egress from the church. Let us pray. Mighty God, we ask you to Bless the gift and the giver that they both may abound unto your kingdom's good. That's our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say hallelujah. hallelujah. We say amen. 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 To brother uh, husband and sister Riley, if do you have a program where you given a program? If you look on the back of that program, you see where it says Larry Grant Pastor. That's my office number. Directly underneath that is my mobile phone number. Um, if you see that number pop up on your phone, please answer it, please, please. It, that's the number I'm calling from, that one right there. So if you'd be so kind as to just place that number in your contact list on your phone, so when you see it, you can say, that's my preacher. All right. Let's prepare now to read the church covenant. Uh, to our new members, remember uh, this church covenant, it's an agreement, but it's an agreement between you and I. It's an agreement between one brother and one sister, between another brother and another sister. Uh, this is not the covenant between us and Jesus Christ. That covenant was settled on Calvary's cross by the blood of Jesus. All we have to do to honor our agreement of that covenant is simply place our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we're going to read responsibly. If, if you don't have this, um, I know we keep a copy of them in the back of the hymnal, also in the back of the church, uh, in the back of a Bible, I believe. Thank you. And you may also share. You can share with somebody, but you can also raise your hand. I think there's an usher. Uh, we need one for Sister Williams down front, for Sharon down front. So, oh, there she is. Got anybody else? Deacon Dunn's got a few. A drummer, you got one? He said, bring the, get a drummer, son. Amen. 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 <laughs> uh -uh. All right. I'm go we're going to read responsibly, meaning that I'm going to read the first paragraph. You'll follow up, read the second paragraph. I'll come back, read the third. You'll read the fourth. 
and then we read the last sentence together. Now remember this, church. When you are, I am right in front of a microphone, so all of you are hearing me at the same time. But when you read quietly, it places a weird echo so the people in this church don't actually follow along. So the only way we can do it in a unified matter is you've got to really use your good voice and you've got to read loudly so that we all stay in sync together. Now, when we fall out of sync a little bit, I'll do my best and put my voice right back in the microphone to bring us back. Uh, but then try your best to keep it nice and loud. Amen, everybody? Amen. Amen. Here, here our covenant. <clears throat> Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and in the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. To sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine. In case of difference of opinion in the church. We also engage to maintain family in secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, that's be uh, peaceably, to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. To cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense. <clears throat> Together, when we remove from this place. We engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Very good. Very good. Ministers, you're in charge. Let's all say amen. Amen. Where we coming from, Mark? The 14th chapter. And we will find these words. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, this is the blood of the New Testament, which I shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day I drink it in the new kingdom of God. May God have a blessing to read and hear of his word. May be full for our spiritual soul. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity, Father, to participate in your Lord's Supper. Father, we... Thank you for your son who you sent to die on Calvary's cross so we may have a life in heaven more abundantly. And now, Father, we come asking for forgiveness of any sins we've committed against you. We pray, for that you send your spirit to cleanse our hearts, minds, and souls, putting us back into fellowship with thee. But now, Father, we ask that you bless this bread and bless the fruit of the vine as we partake to remembering what your son did on Calvary's cross. We ask all these many blessings, your daughter's son, Jesus' name, forever. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Have all been served? Please raise your hand if you have not been served. And remember, if you have a young person, Sister, um, that's Sister Parks, Sister Rosette Parks. Here, I'm going to give you mine. Um, if you have a young person in your family, make sure that you um, uh, be the guiding force to whether they are old enough and have accepted. You're welcome. They have accepted uh, Christ. We, we try our best to not give communion to anyone who's not a baptized believer, but we also don't know uh, every small one. You need more? I think we're good. We're good. Thank you, Rev. Mm-hmm. That's me. That's me. No, no, I, I had two. <laughs> Please hold the bread in front of you. We will eat and drink together. Repeat after me. This bread represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This bread represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take it, all of it. Another cup. This cup represents the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take, drink all of it. Come on. Come on. Mm. All right. As we... <laughs> I know. Uh, um, uh, the ushers are coming down the center out. Uh, preachers, deacons, help me collect. We're going let to... Let's do this, deacon. Um, chairman, brother, chairman, let's, let's do this. Can I, can I trade that for you? We got two. Oh, let's sign that. Let's sign. Okay, let's sign. Look, no, no, you okay. You okay. You okay. Brother Chairman, come on up here. You can do it right here. I said Theron. Theron. Th th okay. We got, we got two and we got two important things we got to do today. We did. Uh, we are, I, I see Brother Sykes back there. Brother Sykes, I need you to come down. I saw Sister Fountain earlier. Is she still here? S Sister Fountain, come on. I didn't know you and Usher now. Oh, girl, y'all ushers be, y'all, y'all swoop them up. Hey, Amen. I mean, she just got here. She an usher. All right. Come on. Bro, Sykes, I'm going to have you, I'm going to have you, let me do my uh, sister first. All right. So you stand right there. Come here, Sister Fountain. Yeah, and um, Sister Fountain, uh, she is an answer to one of my prayers. I've been trying to uh, begin uh, to restart a grief ministry uh, that, we allowed to fade away when uh, Reverend English passed. He was over our entire grief program, and he would be the assigner of who would be singing on those days, who would come out. Uh, how she is uniquely gifted in this is her job. One of the things she works for, she works for an insurance agency that provides um, bereavement insurance. So we, we call pre pre needs. And for any of you who have ever um, experienced waiting on an insurance company to pay off on a life insurance, that takes months, sometimes longer. And if you need resources to pay for your funeral or the funeral of a loved one right now, you have to go around to all family and friends and, and make that happen. What usually happens is it falls to one person in the family. And, and that is burdensome on that one person who gets burdened over and over again by because they made some possibly good life choices, now they have to suffer that um, um, those bills. What I'm gonna have her do one day is uh, explain to the church 
about what this is and how you can get these pre, um, we had it for my, my mom and it worked beautifully because the funeral service got paid directly and we weren't involved in the process. It was, it was already done. So that way they weren't waiting on us to come up with anything. And I think that's a wonderful way to do it, but you have to be taught that you have to uh, a plan for um, these things. We have an older church. We do. And um, there will not be many, I pray to God, uh, deaths like we had in Monique, where she died as, as a young adult. In most cases, most cases, we're going to be up in age. And those of us who are older, my, my deacons are a little older than me, they have moms and dads who are at the age where this really has to be a consideration. So I, I'm saying that because I want y'all to, when y'all see her face, she's a very quiet young lady, uh, but we're going to uh, help, she's going to help me get somebody together. I'm going to also get uh, Pastor David Sincere, I was talking with Reverend Pruitt, about maybe doing some grief counseling with our children. Uh, he's a professional grief counselor. Um, and sometimes, the church for many years has pushed away from the, 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 uh, the professional services saying, we can just pray it. We're just going to pray on it. We're just going to pray it. Well, I found out that there are some of our preachers who need some, um, um, some psychological support. There are some of them who need some chemical support. And in that, you got to talk to some real doctors. Okay. So uh, we're, we're trying to keep um, our wits about us and gather those resources together. Does that make sense? Okay. Pray on us. If that interests you, if that interests you, come talk to me. And then we'll, we'll help to form this group so we can all be together. Now, Sister Fountain, she has finished. Come on over. Come on over. She has finished all of her classes. And uh, now you are going to receive right now the right hand of fellowship. I grant you all rights and privileges according to membership here at Briar Chase Missionary Baptist Church of Jesus Christ. Well, I serve as fast. <laughs> and, and let me let me read it for you. Briar Chase Missionary Baptist Church presents a certificate of completion of orientation to Sister, is it Marietta? Marietta, Marietta Fountain. Uh, on April uh, 2024, signed by Chairman Leonard, Pastor Grant. I give you this and we congratulate you and we love you so much. We pray that God help you to work out your soul salvation in this place and that the skills that God has placed in you will be uh, 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 expanded in this fellowship to, to help the people. Cause God knew that you were coming and he knew you were an answer to a need. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. All right. <laughs> All right. Now brother Sykes, you coming over here. Sykes, Sykes I don't know if he's really quiet in real life, but he's always quiet around me. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it brother Sykes. I'm now going to give you the right hand of fellowship. I grant you all rights and privileges according to membership here at Briar Chase Missionary Baptist Church of Jesus Christ. I just believe that God has called you here with your family, with your big family. Everybody here that, that, that uh, God has really uh, uh, put a mark on your life for his glory and that you've been a, a willing servant. Uh, because I know Sister Sykes has taken you uh, through long journeys of, of getting all these kids and grandkids and all these folks around here. And you've just been so willing. We've just been so thankful uh, that as you extend yourself into the brotherhood ministries and even possibly getting up there in the choir, uh, we're <laughs> we, we going to get them talking yet. We're going to do it yet. And uh, we pray that God open up a uh, 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 space and, and, and place for you to work out your, your ministry here. I, now, I, I present you, Briar Chase Missionary Baptist Church presents a certificate of completion of orientation to uh, Brother, is it Theron? Yes, sir. Theron Sykes. In April of 2024, signed by Chairman Leonard Pastor Grant. Love you, man. I hope to keep on keeping on with you. All right, bless you. <laughs> All right. I think now. Now we can do a little more. I know it was the blood. All right. Come on, won't you stand? I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me, for me. One day when I was lost. He died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. One, one last note. Somebody in this church thought that uh, Sister Grant was my daughter, and uh-huh, uh uh-huh. She, 
has been glowing all week. So I don't know if that was an intentional compliment or not, but she was like, you better treat me right. You better treat me right. <laughs> I said, girl, I tell you. And you know, hey, well, you can't look that pretty unless somebody's made you happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's pray. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, mighty God, we thank you for love. We thank you for love. Lord, we thank you for we thank you for some joy and happiness. Look, there has been times in the 40 years of our existence that we've cried walking out of the fellowship. But yet, time and time again, you have brought us back to love. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you. Lord, no one can do this but you. Yeah. So, Father, we put our trust in you. We put our hope yeah. in you. We put our prayers in you because you are worthy. You. We ask you now, Lord, to guide us. Please. Guide us to our separate destinations and do so safely. Then at your appointed time, Lord, bring us back to the house of prayer where we can lift the name of Jesus again. Uh, and the church says hallelujah. hallelujah. And the church says amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen. <laughs>